Today we're creating a seamless repeat pattern design in Procreate with hand lettering and glowing holiday string lights. The color palette for this project is free as always. Just tap on the link in the video description and you can download and install it. I'm also providing a free Procreate canvas this week that already has repeat selections in it. So be sure to download that first and let's begin. This week's tutorial is brought to you by Envato Elements, which is kind of like the Netflix of graphic design. They have tens of thousands of resources available to artists, including stock photos, presentation templates, audio tracks, logos, fonts, and my favorite, Procreate brushes. We're actually going to be using a set from their library for this week's tutorial, and they've generously offered every Tuesday subscribers with a 70% off coupon, which makes it less than $10 a month to try out. It's limited time though, so tap on the link in the video description to grab your coupon, and let's go download our brushes. Let's get the brushes that we'll use for these. And these are really great textured brushes and there's lots of variety in the set. So when you get to Envato Elements up here in the search bar, you're just going to type in Fabulous Pencil and then hit Add-ons and it'll be this one right here. So tap on that and let's download and install it and I'll meet you in Procreate. Okay, I've got this template canvas that I provided for free. That link is right in the video description. We're going to get to all the seamless repeat steps in just a bit. So first, let's add in our design. And I'm going to create a dark colored background, but we need to not put it on the background color layer. And it's going to be the first color on the top row of the color palette. So just drag that in. And my crosshairs have disappeared. So we're going to adjust that by going into the wrench, canvas, edit drawing, guide and you're just going to tap on a lighter color in the rainbow slider up here and you can increase the opacity and the thickness if you want to see it a little bit better. So I'm going to hit done. Next I'm going to create a brand new layer right above this and we're going to add in our lettering on this layer. You can also use typable text if you're not comfortable with lettering. This tutorial will work perfectly fine with your favorite hand lettered font as well. So I'm going to grab this lighter blue color. It's the third one on the top row. I have the fabulous pencil brushes all loaded in here. There's tons to choose from. So depending on how textured you'd like to go with yours, you have plenty of options. And I'm going to use this Alice's pencil to add in my hand lettering, but the settings for this I need to adjust just slightly because if I write with it right now, it's kind of wonky because there's no streamline setting applied. So I'm going to just tap on that pencil brush to go into the settings, head into stabilization right here on the left, and all you need to do is increase the amount of the streamline. I'm going to come up to about 70% for mine, and then and hit done and now we are good to go so add in your lettering when I'm lettering in more than one word I like putting them on separate layers that way I can kind of tuck them into each other so I'm going to create a brand new layer for my second word now I can position this where I want it to go so now I can just pinch these together to merge them and then put them in the middle of my canvas and I'm all set right there. So the next thing we need to do is add in our string lights. So I'm going to create a brand new layer right above it. And for this one, I'm going to switch to the Fortune 4 pencil, but I also want to adjust the streamline on this one just so I have a little bit more control over the line. So I'm going to tap on that, head into stabilization, and just increase the streamline up to about 50%, and then hit done. Now I want to add a string light to the top and a string light to the bottom, but you have to remember that this is going to repeat, so it's going to be stacked. So whatever distance I leave down here and up here, it's just going to be that much greater once it starts repeating. So I want to make sure that I'm getting pretty close to the top edge and pretty close to the bottom edge when I draw this out. And I'm going to need to connect both sides. So I actually don't like drawing a line straight across, I'll stop it short on both sides. That way I've got a little bit of extra room to play around with how I want that connection to look. So I'm just going to kind of freehand this and then also keep in mind like where this one is ending, this one needs to attach to it. So I want them to be close to the same line. And that feels a little too big for me. I don't want it competing with the thickness of my lettering. So I'm going to bring this down to about 15% and I'll draw it again. I do want to increase the streamline a little bit more. That was more shaky than I expected. So I'm going to come up to 70% on that. We'll try that again. Maybe I'll do down here. 
something like that. And I'm noticing that this top one is still kind of far from the top. And this one's a little bit better. I drew these on the same layer, so I'm going to have to choose a freehand selection. And I can just select this and move this down a little bit further. And that feels a little bit better. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the top one, get it up a little bit further. And it also gives the lettering a little bit more room to breathe. That feels good. So now we're going to begin repeating this. And I always like making a copy that already has the layers applied to it because from this moment on, we need to begin flattening our artwork in order to make it seamless. So I'm kind of a stickler for not losing your layers. If you put in work and you have things layered out, there's always a way to hold on to them so you don't lose them if you make a mistake and you need to go back in the future. So what I like to do is just group what I've done together toggle it up, make a duplicate, and just turn off this reserve group. That way I've got it there if I ever need it. Now we need to flatten this group. So tap on the layer thumbnail and choose flatten. It's all flattened and now we're going to begin the process of making it a seamless pattern. So what I'm going to do is come over here to my selection, make sure this layer is selected, the one that we just flattened, hit the selection, and down here because I prepared this ahead of time for you. If you tap on save and load at the bottom, you'll see that there's three selections in here. You're going to tap on selection number one, and that will select this square, this quadrant, and then come up to your wrench and go into the add category, cut, and then paste. And now this is separated. And we need to do this with the other ones. So I'm going to come back down. This one has the remaining artwork that we need to cut up. So with that one selected, hit the selection, save and load, choose selection two, hit the wrench, cut, paste. And there we go. And we've got one more to do. So come back to the original one, selection, save and load, selection three, wrench, cut, paste. So now we have four right here. And we can label these. So I'm going to label this one zero, one, two, three, and four. So what we're going to do is select number one and number three, Hit select, down here where it says snapping, tap on that, toggle on magnetics, make sure snapping's turned on, and toggle distance and velocity all the way up, and then you're going to drag it straight over so it's on top of the other half. And then you're going to select two and four, do the opposite, slide it over to the left. Now we're going to select one and two, move these down, three and four, move these up. Now you can see where our string lights are meeting and how there's this little bit of a disconnect right here between these two lines that we purposely left. So we're going to take care of that. Now we can merge all four of these layers together. So I'm going to just pinch them and now they're all on one layer. Now we're going to fix our string connection and then we'll add in our holiday lights. We'll test our pattern. And we'll be all done. So I do this on a brand new layer so I can kind of tweak things as I go. I'm going to create a brand new layer. I still have the Fortune 4 pencil selected that I used for the string and now I need to decide how I'm going to make this connection. So I think it makes the most sense to come up and create another curl right here. I'm going to look at where these two meet and make it a little bit cleaner. And then I'll do the same thing down here. I think these ones might actually work if I just take this and bring it straight over so they connect like this. And then I can erase away the excess. So I'm going to erase away this little extra that I drew in there. And if you'll remember this part and this part, we're on the original flattened artwork layer, this one. So we need to remove it off of this layer instead of the layer that we just created. So I'm going to head into this layer and we can't use our eraser because this is flattened artwork. If we try and erase this, it's going to erase the background color too. So we actually just need to paint in the same color that the background is. So I'm going to grab the background color and I need a denser brush for this. That way it fills in all the gaps. So I'm going to revisit my Alice's pencil and I can just paint this out. I like using the texture one even though I have to go over it a few times here because when I meet this edge, it's going to feel more natural than if I use like a hard airbrush to do it. So if you're wondering why I chose a pencil brush, that is why. And I only had a little bit to fix, so that also makes it easier. Okay, that connection is all fixed now. And once you're happy with how that looks, we can merge these two layers together now. It's the extra string that I added in and then the background. 
So just pinch those two together, and now we can add in our lights. So I'm going to create a brand new layer right above this. I'm going to switch back to my light blue string color. I'm going to grab my Fortune 4 pencil, and I'm just going to put little lines where I plan to put the lights. This is a really basic design of a light. So if you want to get more complex, definitely feel free to do that. Keep in mind where these two lines meet, because these two sides are going to butt up against each other. If I have one right here, I want to make sure there's a little bit of space before I do another one. And this one is on the bottom. This one's on the bottom. So maybe I don't even want to have one right here. And maybe I'll move this one a little further over here. So I always take a second look when after I've drawn them to see where it's going to meet up. So this one is kind of close to the edge, but there is going to be a decent gap here. So maybe I want to move this one even closer to the edge than it already is. All right, and then we'll do the same thing for the bottom one. All right, let's look at the two sides. So I have one on a loop right there. So I want to make it pretty close to the edge. I'm going to move that one over a little. Let's add in our lights now. So I'm going to create a brand new layer and I'm going to grab my reddish orangish color first. I'm going to switch my brush back to the Alice pencil because it's a little more textured up here than the string. And that soft glow that I want to achieve with it will be a lot easier with a more textured brush. So I am once again painting these really simply. So this is the shape, it's like a pointed oval. And I like the inconsistency of the stroke here too. And I'm going to skip a few. I don't really have any rhyme or reason or pattern per se, no pun intended, with how I'm choosing where to put the colors. So I'll just add them kind of sporadically. I do make sure though, like if I have this one down, I don't want to do another one down right here or too close to it. So I'm aware of that when I'm choosing where I'm going to put the colors. And then we'll add them down here. So I have one right here, so I won't put one right there. And this one's facing down, so I'll want to put one facing up. So I kind of just work off of the decisions I made previously. And you can change the scale of these two if you want. So that's it for the orange, create a brand new layer. Let's grab the dark blue now. Okay, create a brand new layer. We're gonna grab the green. I'm gonna put another green one right here because I know I just have pink left. Create a brand new layer, grab your pink. These orange ones that I drew in with a smaller size brush are really obviously smaller. So I'm just gonna go back to that layer, which is right here, and just make those ones a little bit bigger. I'm going to switch the green one out with a blue one right here because this bright green is so bright, um, it's going to call more attention to it just naturally. So I'm going to replace that one with a blue one. So I'm just going to find that layer, erase that one out, go to my blue layer, and add a blue one right there. And then I think we will be all set. So now we have colored bulbs, but we need to make them glow. And it's actually way easier than you might think to make these glow. I'm going to group all of the bulb layers together. So this one is the little lines that I made. So it's four layers right here. Group them, duplicate that group, flatten the duplicated group, and now we need to apply a Gaussian Blur to it. So come to the magic wand, Gaussian Blur. I'm gonna come up to about like eight or nine percent for this, and then just change the blend mode on this. And there are two blend modes that I especially like for this glow effect, so you can play around with it a little bit. I like screen and I like color dodge. So if I tap on screen, you can see it's already kind of feeling illuminated from inside. Color dodge is a little more intense, and then add is like insanely intense, so you may not want to go that bright. I tend to like the more subtle feel, so I'm going to stick with screen, but color dodge could also work really well. So I've got screen selected, and now if we zoom out, you can kind of see how that effect is coming to life. Now we're going to test our pattern. So I'm going to, like I did before, create a reserve group. That way I've got all of my layers if I need to come back to them. So I'm just going to group the artwork that I just did, duplicate it, 
turn off the reserve group, and then flatten this top one. So tap on the layer thumbnail and choose flatten. And now we're going to test our pattern. So with this one selected, I'm going to grab it and make sure you still have these settings, everything's up to max and turned on and drag it up and it'll snap right into that quadrant that we have defined with the, with the drawing guide. And now I'm going to duplicate that and drag this one over. And I'm going to pinch these two together and then duplicate that and then drag this one down. And now we're getting an idea of what it looks like. Now I'm going to pinch all of these together and I'm going to do it one more time. So this is a quarter size of our repeat and now I'm going to make it even smaller because I like seeing it repeated more than just a couple of times. So I'm just going to repeat the same steps. Duplicate, so now it's about an eighth of the size of the original pattern square. Same steps as before. And now I can turn off my drawing guide. So come to Canvas, toggle off drawing guide, and now we can zoom in here and you can see that pretty pattern repeating everywhere with our holiday glowing lights. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button, subscribe, and I will see you next time.